I think I've said this before to you. I don't know if it's a little magazine still in print today. But years ago, the Reader's <coughs> Digest always had about one page or one section that said that laughter is the best medicine. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot, of, a lot of truth to that. But you know, Pastor Wilder was mentioning the world today. I, it's been about two years ago, Pastor Jordan at his class where he teaches his young people for the pastors, for the pastors. And he told them, I thought was pretty sound words. He said, when you go out into the world to preach, he said, don't worry about the world around you. He said, you've got to understand that Satan is still the prince of the power of the air. And I thought that was wonderful advice at that time because we know that Satan is the prince of the power of the air. Amen. And we know that because his book says so. If you would this morning, turn to 1 Peter chapter 3. If you have an old Schofield, that's 13, page 13, 14. 1 Peter chapter 3. And let's pick up verses 10 through 17. 1 Peter chapter 3, starting in verse 10. It says, For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? But, and if ye suffer for righteousness sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of the, their terror, neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your heart, and be ready always your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that ask you for a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear, having a good conscience, that whereas they speak evil of you, as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that they falsely accuse your good con conversation in Christ. And verse 17, For it is better, if the will of God be so, that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. You know, I've always thought that God's Word is to be studied, not just read. Just as Paul says, study. Amen. I heard a person on TV fairly recently mention the fact that they had read the Bible through three times. And I thought, that's wonderful, but I wonder if they read it according to 2 Timothy 2.15. Mm -hmm. We hear people, I had a neighbor lady that said they, that they had read clear through the Bible. But they weren't, I don't know if they were saved or not. Here Peter through the scriptures is also teaching good common sense. Of course we know common sense died many years ago. Peter is saying not, give e not to give evil for evil. You know when someone speaks evil of you and you in turn speak evil of them you have stooped to their level. Mm -hmm. You have stooped to their level. As we said, Peter is, not, is saying don't give evil for evil. Notice again verse 17. For it is better if the will of God be so that ye suffer for so doing than for evil doing. But we have to realize today we live in a world that tells us how to be popular, that we should be popular. Everyone is supposed to like us. We're not supposed to be unpopular. As you look around your community, you can usually identify the in-group. They drive the most popular car. They live in the best neighborhoods, go to the best restaurants, visit the best resorts, and may even wear the proper sunglasses. And even at his, and even go to the most popular churches. 
To be popular, you have to fit the right mold. To step out from the crowd and be unpopular is seldom found. In 1917, Martin Luther nailed his 95 Thesis to the door church in Wittenberg. Luther became known as a reformer, and we remember his bold stand as a turning point in church history. This priest exhibited great courage at chastising the church practice of selling forgiveness, which would lend people to think that when they sinned, they could just purchase forgiveness, thus making them inclined not to have tried to avoid sin. Luther's person and zeal to present this pra pra uh, practice did not make him popular with the Catholic leaders of his day. It is written in history that Luther met with the church leaders of that day. He told to try them by scripture why he had changed his mind. They informed him very strongly, Brother Luther, we are not here to discuss scripture. I've always read that one of Luther's favorite scriptures was the just shall live by faith. You know, it didn't matter then what the scripture said, but what the church believed. I have one question for you. I said it does not matter what the scripture said, but what the church believed. And my question is, does that remind you of today? Thank you.